Hello, and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick, with the City of Hampton's Communications and Marketing Department. And today we're going to talk about an event to help you get ready for disasters. Obviously, we hope there's not a hurricane or other type emergency, but if there is, we want you to be prepared. My guest is Sarah Rue from the oh. Emergency Management Office. Nice to be back, Robin. I know. You're one of our frequent guests, and I think it's done a, a lot toward helping people prepare. I hope so. I hope so. That's our goal in emergency management is hopefully to help the community prepare so that if we do have a disaster, there might be a little less of an impact on people if they're prepared beforehand. Right, so. if you're ready, if you yeah. have the supplies, and if mm -hmm. you have some skills and techniques. Yeah. And that's what you're going to talk a little bit about today, is not just the supplies, mm -hmm. but what what you need to know how to do, right? Exactly, it's going to be some hands-on experience. Um, we are doing a preparedness day. And we are inviting people to register beforehand so we can get an accurate count. Um, it's going to be over at Northampton uh, Community Center. Um, and we are going to have six different stations. So you will get to go to all six. It's going to be from 9 in the morning until 12. So we know it is a time commitment, but you do learn quite a bit in that uh, time frame. But so. that's a small time commitment, really. I mean, right. given that some of the other workshops you have for volunteers are two or three hours a week for an extended period Correct. of time. This is maybe not preparing to help the community, but preparing to help yourself and your yes. family. Yes. What you need to know at home. Right. That's true. And we're partnering with several uh, different departments in the city and then several other agencies as well. So the police department will be there talking about home safety and uh, security issues, uh, fraud, etc., those sorts of things. Um, the fire department is going to come and talk about home safety as well, but fire detectors how to sh shut off your gas um, line outside of your house, talk about some of those things. Um, we are going to have the Red Cross come and do some basic first aid, show people how to do some bandages and things in case you know you were to have an issue uh, with the tornado coming through and something fell right, on your head right. or something. You know, Yeah, exactly, just some basic stuff. And um, then the health department is going to assist us with uh, talking about food and water safety before and after a disaster. If you have to purify your water, how to go about that, and then... Right, all those things, how long your freezer can go, exactly. how long things in your refrigerator can go. Yes. They have all that information. Right, when, when to toss and what to toss mm -hmm. and those sorts of things. We're going to go over ready kits, the different types of kits. I know I've been here before and talked about our pet kit and uh, some other different sorts of kits. So um, there will be a regular kit. This is more like a travel kit that I have here on display today. This is the one you keep in, it, you keep it in your car, yes. right, Sarah? For, yeah. No, do you really? I was kidding. Oh. <laughs> You yeah, it, it stays in my car because I use it so often well, you are so <laughs> for prepared. different things. So, and of course, yeah. you travel and tell people I stuff. Do. So, yeah. what are some of the um, what are some of the tools you brought with you today? Well, we have the flashlight, which everybody needs in case their power goes out. Everyone should have one of those in their car yes, or exactly. and in their home, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And uh, emergency ponchos in case you have to go outside in the rain. We've or the rain comes inside to you, exactly. unfortunately. Some dust masks, some really nice leather gloves um, so that uh, stuff won't puncture in case you're moving stuff around. Right, if after there's wood, debris, or, mm -hmm. or things you need to move in your yard. Yep, and then we've got our basic CPR AED first aid kit over here. So um, those are just a, a couple of the things that go in uh, travel bags or uh, uh, travel kits. So um, we'll be talking about the pet kits again. We'll be talking about your big home kit that you have for you and your family. Um, but it's going to be a, a wonderful opportunity for people. You can come in and we're going to start uh, your disaster preparedness plan. What sorts of documents do you need? Do you have extra copies of all of your documents? Are they all in the same place? Or you know, do you have maybe one in a safety deposit box or something? Do you have them on CDs or jump drives? I guess you're going to tell me that there should be one in a safety deposit box or a yeah, CD or a jump or, drive. Or over at your mom's house or uh, over at a friend's house or you know somewhere else outside of Hampton or inside. Lives inland. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Because then you have a duplicate copy of it because how do you prove after a disaster you know that you are who you say you are and you have the insurance on your house that you you have and all those sorts of things. Those were major issues in Katrina especially because they lost all of their government records because it was so bad. Yeah, yeah. If so, the courthouse goes, if those kinds of things you know aren't accessible. Exactly. So not only did the people lose the documents that they had, their birth certificates and, st and stuff that they had in their house, they, the government lost you know, a, quite a bit too. So it always helps to have those sorts of things outside of, the, outside of your home as well in a duplicate copy. So. 
Every time you come, you both scare me and motivate me. <laughs> Is that your job, Sarah? Uh, well, I try not to scare people. I only, you know, give this information to help people prepare. So the idea is not to, to scare or terrify people, but um, you also want to give them the truth, you know, about things that could happen um, so that hopefully they're a little bit more prepared and can take care of them, their family, et cetera, and they don't um, have uh, their they're not a, as worried because when you're prepared, you know what you kind of know what's coming. You know, it's like okay, I have enough food for three to four days. I have enough water. So if something happens, I'm a little bit more confident rather than going out at, right before a disaster strikes and fighting oh, with geez. everybody else in the grocery store trying to get you know your cases of water and you know, your bread and whatever else you want. Right. How many times have we seen that story? Yes. Of people who are you know fighting over the last mm -hmm. loaf of bread and things yeah. like that. And you don't want to be in that boat because no. you don't have to be. No, you don't have to be. You can come in, get prepared. Um, so we're, this this is really um, a program where we're trying to get citizens prepared. It's not the long class that um, we talked about previously, our CERT class, which is also an excellent class. This could be a builder class well, if and you that's liked what I'm, it. I'm thinking if yeah. some people maybe get themselves ready and prepared and feel a little bit more comfortable, yeah. then maybe they can move on to, okay, how could I then help the community help my neighborhood, yeah. let me get a little more training. Exactly. You could do a, a CERT class, our Community Emergency Response Team course. You could do a Medical Reserve Corps or uh, volunteer with the Red Cross or our CART, our Community Animal Response Team, which uh, works in our shelters helping with the animals. Um, this Preparedness Day actually started up in Richmond, the Richmond area, and they have had a very good uh, luck with the program. Several different communities are doing the program up there, so we thought we'd bring it down to Hampton Roads and try it. That sounds great. Now let me ask a question. I, and this is a prediction, I think this one's going to max out. I don't know. How many people do you think you can take in this first preparedness day? We can day? only take 150 due to the capacity of the building. So. Okay, so mm -hmm. if um, you get interest, and first of all, we should tell people, you should go register for this now, yes. because I really do think this is going to fill up, that it's the, the right size and time, mm -hmm. a, a scale of an event that, that people can attend, can learn, can have, you know, that kind of concrete yeah. takeaway. So, suppose this is um, incredibly popular yes. and, and people want more. Yes. Um, well, there's always the CERT team option. Um, also, we are hoping to have another one or maybe two, depending on how many supplies and stuff we have. So, so this could be, you know, kind of a periodic right. thing that people would have another opportunity. Yeah. Every but again, six months or maybe in a year or something. So, you know, yeah. you get that, that beginning of hurricane season where yes. people have a moment of awareness. Yes. And, um, and now, as we're taping this, we're, we're in September and mm -hmm. our fingers are crossed. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And it's National Preparedness Month, too. So it is. And it's, you know, for Hampton Roads, it's the 10th anniversary of Isabel. Mm -hmm. And um, that memory is still fresh for yes. a lot of us. It is. Um, it is. And I hate to say this because yet it sounds scary again, but when Isabel hit, it was only a tropical storm. And I hate to say it was only, but it was a tropical storm when it hit us. And it caused quite a bit of damage. And uh, I know earlier in the season, um, there was a lot of concern with all the rain that we've had, that it was Isabel-type conditions. Where the ground was already right, so wet. Right, where the ground was already really saturated, and that makes it easier for trees to topple over. And that was one of our main issues in Isabel, along with the flooding, but the, the trees toppling over as well. So, What is this line you walk where we don't want to scare people, but right. at the same time, if, if you're not a little bit motivated by what can happen, mm -hmm. you're not going to prepare. That's I know true. that I'm, um, I'm not terribly good at that um, some of the time. So you always get me motivated, and I go home and, and get a little bit done after you visit. Good to you. If you do a little bit all year long, then it won't be one big mass buying spree or something. So you can, uh, you know, buy your buy an extra can opener or um, you know a flashlight one week and then spread it out throughout the year so then it's not a major cost all at one time and then you're also rotating stuff through so the kit is always fresh. That's smart and the other thing is even though around here statistically we tend to prepare for hurricane yes. season I think the tornadoes um, a, a year or so two yeah. years ago however long it's been now have shown us that there's all kinds of potential disasters that can hit this area and that yeah. you have to be as prepared in April as you are in 
in August and September. That is true, and we can also get winter storms. We haven't had a major winter storm in a while, but um, that is an option. And I've heard if we have a mild hurricane season, that means heavy winter storms. So no, I no. know, I know, I know. So it uh, seems to be something, always something. So it keeps you on your toes year round. Okay, well, Sarah, remind people where they can go to register or to call to register for this class and mm -hmm. also where they can get preparedness information in general. Okay, they can go, they can call 311. Um, they will enter your information into our online system. Otherwise, you can go to the City of Hampton website and click on the calendar and on um, September 28th, <laughs> if you click on September 28th, then uh, we are one of the options for one of the activities on that day and it'll take you to it. That's great, and we can so. also hit your website. If yeah. you go to Hampton.gov and you look under living, um, emergency preparedness is right there. It's under the government tab. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's under how do I. I mean, we, we try to make it very visible so yeah. that people who want that information can, can find it quickly. Yes, and you guys do a wonderful job <laughs> of getting information out. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much. Sarah, is there anything I've forgotten to ask you that you wanna add about this? preparedness um, day? No, not really. I really, I'm just very thankful for our partners that are assisting us because not only is it the disaster preparedness with getting the kits and the plans and the documents all uh, organized and settled, you know, uh, you don't really often get the opportunity to talk to the health department about food safety or uh, the fire department and have them show you how to turn off your gas meter and the police department. So we're really thankful and Red Cross for basic first aid. We're really thankful to our partners for assisting us in this day because without some of their expertise, it wouldn't be nearly as good as I think it's going to be. Well, I think that's helpful and certainly they're the ones who come in during and after a disaster. Mm -hmm. So they have the same yeah. incentive as all the rest of us to help people be more prepared so there are less um, after effects yes. that, that you have to deal with. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Sarah. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for having me. And thank you. I hope you will take this opportunity to um, do some of the things Sarah suggests. And if you're unsure what to put in your ready kit or how to prepare, um, come by the workshop and make sure you register first. Thank you. Thank you.